Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, Dwyer Boxing News, one word. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, if you've ever worked in an office, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, or perhaps if you're um, in school and you have a homeroom where people maintain desks, you'll know what I'm talking about. You have some co-workers or some fellow students who can maintain a clean desk with their eyes closed, right? It could be the end of the world, right? A lot of balls up in the air, deals that are about to close, right? A lot of people running around. You're going to have a co-worker who somehow effortlessly has an organized clean desk, right? In school, you can have midterms or final exams. You can have a lot going on and stuff like that. You're going to have some classmate who has a clean locker, right? It's just how they're wired. It's just the way they are, right? Now, you know that you can, if you're like me, you can maintain a clean desk for some short period of time when it's not raining outside. But when the bullets start flying and you've got to get things done, at your desk, then it's going to get cluttered, <coughs> right? So you can, you can keep it together short term, but long term, you care about the task at hand, not your desk. You're not wired for appearance, so your desk is going to be cluttered, right? Some famous American presidents, John F. Kennedy, Barack Obama, can't keep clean desks. Right? You know, these are men who understood their personality types were not the type where they were always behind a spotless desk. Right? It's just like Bill Clinton, another president, trying to be on time to an event. It's difficult for him. Right? Because the way he's wired, he's doing other things. Right? He's squeezing appointments into the rest of his life. Right? His life's not the appointment. His life is the rest of his life. Right? Now let's talk about how this translates into sports. Because I think it's really important. Right? You look at a basketball player like Michael Jordan, the consummate scorer, or a pitcher like Greg Maddox, the consummate pitcher, right? These guys had major league level talent just on their primary task, right? Just on offense. Michael Jordan was an NBA level player, right? Just with his pitching, Greg Maddox was a major league baseball big league talent, right? But yet the way these guys were wired. Both of these guys focused on defense, right, from day one, right? There's never a time when you watched Michael Jordan, except perhaps his last two years when he was an old man with the Washington Wizards, right? But there's never a time when Jordan is wearing a Tar Heel uniform or a Chicago Bull uniform where Jordan wasn't absolutely dominant on defense. Forget his offense, right? Forget his offense. Forget his philosophy on scoring, which in a book he wrote as, in terms of four quarters, eight, 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 and eight, right? 32 points a game, right? For his career, he averaged uh, just a shade over 30 points a game, right? Forget his offense. Just understand the way he was wired 
when he walked on the court and his opponent had the ball, Jordan was dominant defensively. He made the effort. Understand, Greg Maddox, for all of the great strikeout walk ratio, for all of the low ERAs, right, Greg Maddox had something like 18 gold gloves. Right, as dominant as he was on the mound, he was as dominant off the mound, fielding his position. Right, that's from day one. I found that great defensive fighters, right, the guys who enter the ring and they're excellent defensively, right, I found that those guys. Don't pick that up when they're 30 years old in a young man's game, right? They are just wired that way from day one. There are there are certain things you can't teach, in my opinion, in boxing, right? One is the will to be defensive, right? In other words, just like with a clean desk. You know the real test comes when the deadlines are approaching, right? When it's raining outside, when the roof's about to cave in. Some people will maintain a clean desk. Other people won't, right? It's the same thing in boxing. The great defensive fighters, when the bullets start flying, when the opponent is getting uppity we'll use that word in this context right when your opponent's getting uppity and is trying to close the show draw a line make a statement right the great defensive fighters will rely on defense they don't get lulled into shootouts right a Pernell Whitaker is calm as a cucumber when the bullets are flying right Mayweather even when an opponent is up on him trying to empty the gun Marcus Maidana early in their fight Mayweather's there blocking shots right he doesn't abandon his defense because it's part of how he sees the game right I don't believe you can teach defense nor do I feel that you can really teach energy level right some guys are the energizer bunny you look at a James Kirkland fight and he's throwing a lot of punches he's up on you he's physical right you you can sense his physical presence, even when he's being frustrated, like the Carlos Molino fight, right? He's fighting, let's face it, a more skilled fighter, right? Even as he's losing rounds in that fight, you sense his physicality. You sense his energy level, right? You know the guys who have that high energy energy level right I don't believe you can teach that a guy like Canelo I'm sorry folks I know he's young I know we keep hearing he's in his mid-twenties good for him right but Canelo right now needs to pace himself Canelo right now needs to take off portions of rounds no trainer can step in and give Canelo, let's say, the energy level of a Manny Pacquiao. It's just not going to happen. Right? So, given that, in my opinion, defense and energy level really can't be picked up late in the game. Right? It really can't be then I'm someone who views with skepticism the news that Andre Berto is now training with Virgil Hunter. Right, Virgil Hunter has a great defensive fighter, Andre Ward. 
He's excellent defensively, right? Excellent. But understand, I believe Andre Ward is like a Greg Maddox. He's like a Michael Jordan. I think Andre Ward just saw the sport when he first started as a sport that required him to be great defensively. Right? That's just how he is wired. Right? So as he is in the ring doing things, he intuitively would be thinking about the defensive side of the game. Right? You know, there's a difference between, let's say, the Jordans and the Kevin Loves. Kevin Loves in the news. Okay, great. Right? Understand. Uh, in fact, let me switch out Jordan for a second. Let's talk about another great. Akeem Olajuwon. Right? Um, Dream was great offensively when he wanted to be. He was great offensively. But Dream also was great defensively. Major shot blocker would come outside the paint to stick an opponent. Right? You know, just a guy who, quite frankly, saw his role on the court as a two-way role. Right? So, you understood that he was always going to have the energy to track you down. That whatever he was doing offensively, defensively, he was a big man who was going to make an impact or at least try to. So a guy coming down the lane on Elijah Wan would know that his shot was going to get challenged. Right? Everyone watching this video knows that's not the case with Kevin Love. Right? Kevin Love can get boards. Kevin Love can get points. Kevin Love has a three-point shot. But he's not wired for that level of defensive game. Right? He's, he's just not. I don't care if his teammate is Ricky Rubio or LeBron James. Right? He's not a shutdown defender right that's a different personality type you understand what I'm saying I don't care who his coach is at this stage in his development no coach is going to suddenly give him the energy level or the focus to be a great defensive basketball player I believe that's how it is with Andre Berto. During the slow rounds, I'm sure Virgil Hunter can show him some of the defensive moves that Andre Ward has, right? Who Virgil Hunter has trained forever, right? You know, um, I'm sure Virgil Hunter can show him the proper spacing, the maneuvering, and all, you know, all the X's and O's of being a great defensive fighter. But the boxing hardcore here online, we know Andre Berto. When the bullets are flying, isn't Berto going to think offense? Haven't we seen Berto's eyes puffed up in fights? Because he's more busy trading blows than he is defending himself. Right? When's the last time you saw Floyd Mayweather with a closed eye? When's the last time you saw Bernard Hopkins looking messed up after a fight? It doesn't happen to those guys because those guys are defending themselves. They don't get lulled into shootouts. Right? Floyd Mayweather keeps his head when he's fighting a Marcus Maidana. Right? Bernard Hopkins keeps his head when he's fighting a Joe Calzaghe. 
right? These guys, under stressful circumstances, don't throw caution to the wind. That's not who they are. That's not how they're built. That would be like asking Michael Jordan to forget about defense. Asking Greg Maddox to forget about defense. That's never going to happen. Right? Because these guys see defense as part of their offense. Right? Andre Ward is not going to enter the ring and suddenly decide to trade punches rather than be a great defensive fighter. That's just not going to happen. For Andre Berto, it has happened repeatedly, right? So, if I'm analyzing a future Andre Berto fight, knowing that he's now with Virgil Hunter, understand, I believe that you're going to have moments in his fight, in his fights, in the later rounds, that mirror, let's say, his fight against Robert Guerrero. Right, where an opponent is throwing punches and ready to trade, and Andre Berto throws defensive skills and caution to the wind and tries to trade back with him. Right? Berto's not nineteen, he's thirty. Boxing's a young man's game. I think you have to be wired for defense. It's obvious when you compare it to other sports. There is nothing right now that Carmelo Anthony can do to make himself the defensive player that a Dennis Rodman, that a Kobe, young Kobe, before the knee injuries, or that a Michael Jordan was. Nothing. Right? You could even hire Kobe or Jordan to be his coach right what could Jordan do to give Carmelo Anthony the energy level on defense when the bullets are flying when the deadline is here when it's raining outside to actually step up his game defensively I'd say very little right in boxing the slow rounds before the bullets are flying when the fight's not on the line okay then I could see a guy showing us some defensive improvement but great defense takes years to develop we know that and great defense takes a certain temperament where you're just trusting your defensive skills Right? That takes years to develop. You don't pick that up at 30 years old. Right? Andre Berto in a shootout against a motivated opponent, like let's say a Robert Guerrero, right? Um, a Soto Caras, right? a guy who's trying to bring it, who's trying to get you out of your comfort zone. The way I'm going to look at Berto fights is, to me, he's going to be the same old Andre Berto. I can look in his corner, I can see... Virgil Hunter, I could see Nacho Beverstein, I could see Freddie Roach, uh, you know, Emmanuel Stewart could come back from the dead and be in his corner, it could be Joel Diaz, it could be Robert Garcia, to me it's still going to be the same old Andre Berto when the bullets are flying. View me as a skeptic, I look forward to the next announced Andre Berto fight. I just think Andre Berto has a lot of fight in him and gets caught up in the moment, right? I think the great defensive fighters don't get caught up in the moment, right? I think they come in the ring and they say, okay, when he does this, I got to do that. When he does this, I got to do that. I got to have the spacing this way. I got to dot these I's and cross these T's. And so when a Floyd Mayweather is in against Marcus Maidana, right, who is more driven than skilled, 
and when a Marcus Maidana comes over with a lot of energy and is throwing a lot of punches and gets him off at the side of the ring, there's no panic. Right? Floyd has certain things that he needs to do in certain situations, and when the situations present themselves, he's going to do those things to neutralize the onslaught. There's no panic. He's not thrown out of his game plan. He's just relying on his defensive skills, and he's making the adjustments. That's impossible to me to teach when you're in, let's say, the top of the seventh inning of your boxing career. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. This is not to say that great trainers can't help you lift your game. They certainly can in the slow rounds. But my point to you is simply, right, when it's the top of the seventh, right, and when you haven't spent the first six innings developing your defensive skills, you're not going to trust them, whoever your teacher is, as that deadline approaches, when the fight's on the line, when it's raining outside, when you need to make your final case, your closing argument to the judges. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.